Welcome. Welcome, everybody. I am Professor Williams, and this is Community Property. Feel free, if you have any questions, to come up and ask me during the breaks, or you can always email me at swilliams, S-W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S, at law.utexas.edu. That's swilliams at law.utexas.edu. Now, not only are we going to learn about community property for purposes of the bar exam today, but I'm going to give you information that is interesting and perhaps even useful to you. For example, suppose you are engaged and you want to dry, <clears throat> sorry, buy your dream boat. Should you buy it on cash or credit? Well, actually, we're going to find out the answer to that question at about the two hour mark. Suppose you go ahead and buy that boat, take it for a spin, you look on the beach and who is there? Your fiance taking a romantic sunset walk with someone who is not you. And one word pops into your head, that word is prenup. Prenup. We're going to find out what you can and cannot accomplish with prenups at the two hour and 20 minute mark. And finally, suppose you buy that boat, you get married on that boat. But a drunken groomsman steers his boat into yours and injures you. Does it matter whether you're injured right before you say I do or right after you say I do? It does. And we're going to find out how and why at the 40 minute mark. All right. Now let me just give you an overview of the whole lecture. We're going to discuss three main topics. The first one is characterization. We need to figure out what property is community property and what property is separate property. That is extremely important because courts can divide community property on divorce, but they cannot reallocate a spouse's separate property. After characterization, we're going to discuss division. Courts divide community property in a just and right manner. That section is also going to discuss spousal maintenance and some equitable doctrines that come into play when, for example, a husband uses $10,000 of community property to buy his mistress a tennis bracelet. After characterization and division, we're going to discuss prenups and various other agreements that spouses might enter into. Those agreements are going to alter the default rules of characterization and division that we're talking about. And then we have a few other smaller topics like creditor's rights. We're going to move very quickly through the material. We're going to get you out of here in less than three hours. That's the good news. There's always some bad news. The bad news is we have to do some math. Lawyers hate math. If we loved math, we'd be engineers. But we're dealing with money today. And whenever we're dealing with money, we're going to have to do a little bit of math. Most of it is very simple arithmetic. When we get to pensions, things get a little bit harder. But we're going to take it step by step and everything's going to be OK. Just again, everything's going to be OK. All right. Let's start with that characterization question. We need to learn how to characterize property into community property, the husband's separate property, and the wife's separate property, or the husband's and the husband's, as we are today. We often refer to these as the three marital estates, the community estate, husband's marital estate, and a wife's estate, separate estate, sorry. The most important distinction is between community and separate property, but sometimes we get situations where we know something is separate property, but we're not quite sure whose it is. And by the way, the outline just uses CP for community property, SP for separate property. All right, top of page one. There are three basic principles that we're going to use to figure out whether something is separate property or community property. Number one, property acquired before marriage is separate property. That's the inception of title rule, right? Inception of title rule in that blank. Inception of title. If the inception of title was before marriage, the item is separate property. Inception of title. Number two, property acquired during the marriage by gift, by gift, devise, or descent is separate property. Number three, property acquired during the marriage but purchased with separate property funds is separate property. That's the concept of tracing. Tracing. Those are the principles that define separate property. But what's community property? Well, it's property other than separate property acquired by either spouse during the marriage. Now, couples are often married for a long, long time. They can't remember uh, who bought that picture frame, where it exactly came from. And to deal with those issues, we have the community property presumption. All property owned at divorce is presumed to be community property. Spouses must provide clear and convincing evidence, clear and convincing evidence that a particular asset is separate property. Clear and convincing evidence. 
All right, let's just work through a few examples just to make sure we understand our three basic rules. Homer earns $100 while working for the power plant before his wedding. Is it community or separate? It's separate property. Inception of title rule. It was earned before the marriage. Separate property because it was earned before marriage. Separate property because it was earned before marriage. Homer acquired that money before marriage. It's separate property. And note what that means. It means all wage and income is going to be community property that's earned during the marriage. And most people don't have a whole lot of savings when they get married, which means that most of their money at the end of the day is going to be community property. All right, next example, Homer buys a car the day after his wedding to Marge. The day after his wedding to Marge, is it community or separate? Let's start with that inception of title rule. So Homer acquired it during the marriage. So it's going to be community property. That's rule number one, unless. Okay, we'll pause here. Community property, that was just rule number one, unless, and now we're going to invoke rule number three. Okay, community property, unless there's clear and convincing evidence that Homer used separate property funds. going to be community property, CP, unless, CCE, clear and convincing evidence, if you really want to be judicious about how much you write, CP, unless, CCE, SP. That would be a little cryptic, but it would get the job done. All right. One year after his wedding, Homer's father gives him a pair of diamond-studded cowboy boots. Are those community or separate? Separate property. Gifts are separate property. That's just rule number two. Gifts are separate property, even if they're acquired during the marriage. Now, what if Homer sells those cowboy boots and uses the money to buy a bronze statue of himself eating a donut? Is that community or separate? Because no doubt this is going to be an amazingly contested issue because Marge really wants this statue to pulverize it with a sledgehammer, of course. But she is going to be out of luck because that statue is separate property. Why? Why is it separate property? Rule number three, tracing. Under the concept of tracing, the items that Homer buys with separate property are themselves separate property. How do we know he used separate property here? He converted separate property boots into separate property cash, converted separate property cash into a separate property statue of himself eating a donut. So it's SP under the concept of tracing. All right. Next example, using community property money, Marge buys Homer's cowboy boots back from the pawn shop and gives them to him for his birthday. Are they community or separate? The boots are separate property. That's rule number two. Gifts are separate property. And this example helps clarify that that rule holds even when those gifts are purchased with community property. Gifts are separate property. Again, even if they're purchased with community property funds. All right, now let's flip over to page two. We have a few more quick examples. Homer's father gives a car to Homer and Marge. Is it community or separate? This is a trick question. Why? We know it's separate property because it's a gift. Okay? The question is, whose separate property is it? After all, it was given to both Homer and Marge. Here, they're going to own it as tenants in common. SP as tenants in common. Now, what if Homer gets end-of-the-year bonuses based on the safety of the power plant in the previous calendar year? He marries just after that calendar year ends, but receives the check in the mail just after his wedding. Is the bonus separate or community? It's separate property. Separate property. Here's the short answer. Because it was earned before marriage. That's what you can write in that blank. Separate property because earned before marriage. So under the inception of title rule, the key is when Homer earned the right to the bonus, not when he happens to get the check. The check could be delayed in the mail. Who knows what could happen there? The key is when he earned the right to that bonus. That happened before the marriage. So it's separate property. Separate property. All right, at the time of their divorce, Homer and Marge own the first season of Friends on DVD. No one can remember how they got it. Was it a gift? Did they buy it? What funds did they use? No one knows. Is it community or separate? It's community property. The community property presumption is going to control here. 